All right, welcome to the Armaments Transmutation Guide. So uh, right now it's February 2024. If you're looking at a guide before uh, February, it's probably going to be outdated because today uh, it was officially announced that you can now uh, transmute or re-roll more than 10 times. So uh, it actually changes the strategy and uh, we're going to go over it. But in general, let's actually just go over the basics of armaments. So when you open up the armaments, right, you're going to get f uh, one of four types. So the top left is always going to be the scroll. Top right will be the instrument. Bottom left will be emblem. Bottom right will be flag. There's also different formations, right? So the most popular one right now in February 2024 is going to be wedge. But also some people use arch for smite. As far as the slots, if you look on the left over here, uh, the top one is going to uh, top slot is going to be usually attack. Right? So you could get some other stuff, but usually it's going to be attack. Slot two is going to be defense. Slot three is going to be health. And then if you have an inscription on it, then when you press transmute, you'll have the ability to transmute it. These stats over here, uh, it's basically the minimum percentage of the base stat you could get. So right now we have Nesky, that's a cow commander, right? So the lowest you could get would be like the lowest probability where you will roll a calf stat uh, when you open something up would be 17%. Uh, there's also a chance that you could get all damage for slot three in lieu of health. It's gonna be the same percentage for instrument. Whereas if you go to emblem and flag, you'll notice the lowest percentage actually drops uh, for emblem is 13.01%. Flag is gonna be 14.72%. Uh, it's actually different. It's like a little bit higher for health, a little bit lower for attacks. So I just decided to list the lowest percentage. And then uh, the all damage is also gonna be lower for emblem and uh, on par with the other ones uh, for the flag. So just based off the percentage here, uh, if you notice that out of the four right now, the bottom left, the emblem, is your worst armament that's probably <clears throat> that would be in line with the probability and for me personally i noticed that my emblem is the worst you know i get the least amount of inscriptions and the stats on there seem to be the worst and the probability here actually lines up with that okay so let's actually just be nerdy a little bit go over the math now if you just wanted the strategy uh there's gonna be there's gonna be uh, links on the video where you could just skip to the end, but we'll just go over the math really quick so you know why we're getting to the conclusion we're getting to. All right, so right now, um, we're in essentially version three of Armaments. So when Armaments first came out, you couldn't re-roll at all. So whatever you got was just whatever you got, right? That was just all RNG, it's all luck. Uh, a few months after uh, Lilith introduced Armaments, they introduced a system to transmute, so or re-roll, right? So now, uh, when you have three stats, <clears throat> if you don't lock any, it costs one transmutation stone. If you lock one, right, so you want to lock one, and then you're re-rolling the other two, it'll cost you three transmutation stones. And then if you want to lock two and just roll for one more, it's going to cost you five transmutation stones. Uh, transmutation stones as of February 2024 is still fairly hard to get. So for me personally, I'm a mid-spender. <clears throat> I would say on average, I probably get about one transmutation stone today. So if you think I wanna re-roll something where I lock two of the stats, uh, every five days I'll get a chance at it, right? So <clears throat> if I wanted to take 10 chances at it, it'll take 50 days and that's just for one armament. And uh, you could you could see how if I'm doing that for five, six marches, it can actually get take really long. So uh, as of right now, armaments is something where a lot of it just depends on your luck, but you can control some of it over the strategy and we're gonna talk about it. So the way to calculate this is actually something called a binomial distribution. If you go look up in Google and you look up a binomial, binomial probability calculator, uh, you'll be able to calculate whatever you want. Okay, so uh, if you guys go back to the last slide, remember uh, the chances of getting an attack, a cav attack, defense, or health is going to be 17% for the scroll and the instrument. If you put in 17% here, or 0.17, then you uh, have the percentage that you're going for, right? The number of trials is how many uh, stats are being rolled at once. So if you lock no stats, then you're essentially gonna be doing three trials every turn, right? Because uh, you have three chances to actually hit the stats if you're not locking any. Number of successes is, okay, do you want all three stats to come out? Like, so all three are calf stats. The chances of that will be right here, right? The probability is 0.00491, or if you do it as a percentage, is actually 0.49%. So 
by using this calculator, you could calculate all the numbers here on the right. But if you have nothing and you just want to roll for, say, cav stats, infantry, or archer, you have a 35.13% chance of getting one, 7.2% chance of getting two, and then 0.49% chance of getting th uh, all three stats, about half a percent, right? So uh, your chances of getting anything for the desired uh, troop type is going to be 42.82%. If you already have one locked, right, and your chances of getting one more, so you get two, will be 28.2%, three will be 2.89%, the total will be 31.09%. And if you already have two locked, right, so if you already have two locked and just rolling for one more, it costs you five transmutation stones, it's just going to be the percentage, right? So 17%, 17%. That's actually how you calculate this. Now, when you are rolling, uh, the stats actually comes out in a range, right? So uh, I'll actually put the link to the website in the description. But if you look it up over here, the range for legendary, uh, as far as like base stats, it's always going to be between 1.5 and 3.5%. And then all damage is going to be 0.5 to 2%. And for some people that care, uh, march speed is always going to be between 1.5 and 3.5%. So if you want like like at, at this point in the game most of the end game like the better players 1.5 percent is really low for them right there's their the number they're happy with is going to be somewhere higher it could be two it could be 2.2 uh maybe the overachievers will be three uh, and i'll actually show you why that's very hard to get but it's probably going to be 1.5 percent that most end game like mid high spenders that's been doing this for a while are they're looking for something higher all right but if you want to calculate that probability essentially uh, this is how you calculate it. So the probability percentage, the range is, you know, 2%, right? 1.5 to 3.5 is 2% divided by 0.1. So 2 divided by 0.1 is 20. The probability here is 17. So 17 divided by 20 will come out to 0.85%. So for every decimal you remove, so for, for example, if I don't want 1.5 because that's too low, you're going to take 17 minus 0.85 and you'll get the new percentage, right? If you don't want 1.5 and 1.6, you're going to minus 1.7% uh, um, because you don't want 1.5, 1.6. That's how, actually how you calculate this. And I'll put it out in like a graph on the next uh, slide so you can see it. So if you're using 17%, and keep in mind that is for the scroll and the instrument, if you're doing the emblem and the flag, right, it's actually down to like 14% or like 13 point something percent. But we're just gonna use 17% to make it easy to understand. So if you're willing to accept the whole range from 1.5 to 3.5, right, your chances are 17%. If you're willing to accept only 2.5 to 3.5, that percentage drops to 8.5. And if you're willing to only accept three to 3.5, that percentage drops down to 5.1. So this graph on the, uh, I mean, this chart on the left, I already showed this to you, right? If you have nothing, your chances of getting one out of either attack, defense, or health uh, is going to be 35.13% total. So like, if you get really lucky, you get all three, but the chances of getting anything is going to be 42.82%. You can see if you're only willing to accept 2.5 to 3.5, that number drops, right? So if you have nothing, every single time you transmute, uh, your chances are I'm dropping down to 23.36%. And you can see the chances of getting two or three are almost negligible. Whereas uh, when it's 17%, the chances of getting two is at least 17.2%. This drops down to two, like 0.06%. That's like six in 10,000, right? I mean, it could happen, but it's very unlikely. So if you do get like a triple stat armament, that's like at least 2.5 or higher. Just know like that was like a six in 10,000 chance. It's, it's actually a little bit less, but uh, you were very lucky, right? So uh, I think we all, maybe I've gotten lucky at least once. Uh, sometimes we take it for granted, but I at least appreciate it. Now, if your goal is to get something between three and 3.5%, you could see how much more it drops, right? So if you already have one locked, right? The chances of getting another one is actually about 10%. And uh, if it's 10% and you took 10 shots at it, about 65% of the time, you'll actually get another stat. Right, so let's just say it took you 10 turns, right? That's 50 transmutation, uh, that's gonna be 30 transmutation stones. Uh, and about 50% of the time, uh, about 65% of the time, over 10 turns, that means 30 transmutation stones, uh, you will get another stat that's three to three and a half percent. So 
when people ask like, oh, what stat should be the minimum I shoot for? It actually really depends because it depends on your spend level, how fast you accumulate uh, transmute, how fast you accumulate transmutation stones and also what your current gear is already at. So I'll actually kind of give you my suggestion at the end, but this is just kind of showing the numbers, okay? So what about March speed? Uh, <clears throat> If you look at what is available in lieu of attack, infantry and cavalry march speed could show up instead of attack. Well, for the archer, it actually only uh, replaces defense or the second slot, but not the first slot. So currently in February 2024, uh, the infantry meta uh, that those marches are actually for the most part fast enough unless you're using Gorgo. Whereas the archer marches all feel really slow because uh, like Zuga Liang is really good, but he has no march speed. If you're still using YSG, he has no march speed. Budica only has 10%, so it feels really slow. Uh, but you, in my opinion, you shouldn't sacrifice the short term just because that's the current meta right now. You probably shouldn't sacrifice defense for march speed unless you're getting a decent amount of march speed for that slot, which in my opinion would be like at least 3%. I think for infantry, uh, I'm willing to take uh, march speed in lieu of uh, attack. So if your minimum is 2.2% and march speed comes out and you get 2.2%, I'm willing to accept that personally, just because I know infantry is always going to be the slowest. And uh, when you have a very, very high amount of attack, even though like you could get more attack, it actually matters less in the grand scheme of things. So yes, for uh, March infantry March speed, uh, if, if it hits my minimum, probably no for Archer, unless it's at least 3%, and then just no for Cav, just because you don't need it, okay? Now, all damage uh, will show up in the third slot instead of health, and it's really hard to say, because one is all damage, one is you know how tanky and how survival you are, it's not necessarily that easy to compare them. I've heard people say that all damage should count for like between like 2x to 3x worth of stats. So if you get 0.5, just count it as like 1 or 1 1.5. But attack matters a lot less than health, right? So it's really hard to, to calculate it that way. My feeling without being able to justify it using numbers, uh, if it's something like 1.2% or higher, I would probably keep it. If it's lower, I think I would actually rather just have health. Uh, I, I'm not, I mean, I'll just be honest. I'm not willing to really dig in further and try to prove it just because there's so many different factors, but that's just the strategy that I'm going to stick with. So let's actually talk about the overall strategy you should take. Okay. So one, like I said earlier, it depends on your spend and your role, right? If you're spending a lot, you're going to get a lot more transmutation stones. You'll be able to take an, a lot more shots at this. Uh, but in general, I think most players, it's based on the percentages I show, you should be shooting for something at first between like two and two and a half percent. Let's just pretend everything was two percent. And that means the base stats you have would be 24 percent, right? If it was, everything was two and a half percent, then the base stats you have would be 28 percent. So if you're somewhere between there, that's at least good enough to keep up with almost all everyone, all the other players and better than a lot of other players. After that, if you want to work on a high upside project where you're shooting for 3%, 3.5%, go for it. But I think it's important to at least get your baseline to a decent place before you really shoot for the moon. And then as far as the strategy, it's going to be really simple. It's going to be the same for free to play all the way up to the highest spender. You're going to have your starting armament, right? It has to be inscribed right now for you to transmute it. It's already going to have one, two, or three stats. And you can already decide whether you want to keep it or not, right? If you have no stats then you just roll all three until you get one that's at the minimal number you want and you lock it. Then you just keep rolling again until you get another one. And then you finally, you're going to try to get the third one. Obviously, the third one is going to cost you a lot more stones. But by then, you should already have two stats that are at a decent place that you want. And you just keep doing this. And uh, as of right now, um, the way these transmutation crystals are going to work, apparently they're going to show up as a... Uh, achievement in KVK. So there is going to be a limited amount. You can't just like spend an unlimited amount of money and keep rolling. But unless something comes out where they're extremely hard to get or uh, something that is unforeseen, uh, this is just going to be the strategy. Okay. Now, if you watch the end, hopefully you got some value from this. If you did and you haven't uh, subscribed, please subscribe and like the video. You know, you know, any comments or questions, please leave it. Uh, it really helps out the channel. Currently, I'm close to a thousand subscribers, uh, and that's kind of my next milestone. And again, thank you for watching. Uh, 
and I'll see you guys next time.